पूछो जाके उनसे जिन पे रोशनी नहीं पूछो जाके उनसे कैसी लगती है कमी I welcome you all to the Opto Hub, a platform of interaction, learning, growing, and blowing. The barrier which hinders juniors and seniors interaction is easily been broken down by holding the sessions, which are very interactive. In today's session, you will get to know about dispensing optics by Paula Mam. She is working as an operations manager in Optometry Council of India and as a training manager at A1 Opticals Bangalore. She is well versed in teaching subjects such as geometrical optics, dispensive optics, optometric optics, and contact lenses. She has also been a helping hand in CSR projects, several other eye health awareness projects, and fellow of ASCO in dispensing optics. We have already learned about terminologies and basics of dispensing optics. Now, for today, we are going to learn troubleshooting cases and art of dispensing. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Opto uh, Paula, ma'am. Yes. So, uh, in the previous session, we have, as already said, uh, we have learned about the terminologies and basics like optics and all. Today, uh, these are the topics. So, uh, I will try to finish as much as possible. If not, then uh, we will do maybe a third session where we will discuss uh, troubleshooting and case studies, and we will have a quiz. So, let's see how much the time permits. So. To talk about lens design, okay, so the various lens designs, single vision lenses, it is the lens which has only one focal power and it can be used by non presbyops having single power for all distance viewing and by presbyops to view clearly only at one distance. So one power is catered with a single vision lens. Next is bifocals. So this is a lens which has two portions having different focal powers for distance and near. It has, because there are two different lenses, the optical centers are also uh, two. Now, if you want to classify bifocals, then there's one piece and then there's two piece. So one piece bifocal, we have solid bifocal, Altex, Executive and flat top. Two piece, we have Franklin Spit, cemented, round or uh, cryptop, which is uh, the uh, usually in common terms we say as KT. So these are the different, I have put the pictures you can see. So round, then flat top, this is curved, uh, B segment and R. So this is usually, you know, the B segment is usually the uh, in bifocal the best because it has the least image jump. I'll uh, talk about image jump. Commercially available, we have KT that is round top. Then we have D and then we have executive. These are the most, uh, you know, uh, used bifocals in the market. So coming up, coming to cryptop or round segment, uh, the, the reading segment is made up of flint glass. So uh, if you remember, we have read about crown and flint in the previous uh, discussion. The segment is fused into the parent lens. So this is the parent lens and this is where the uh, flint glass is fused at a very high temperature. Round segments, the, it may vary from size uh, from 22 mm to 38 mm. mm. So this can vary from uh, 22 mm to 32, uh, 38 mm. Okay. The D-shaped or flat top. Now, why it is uh, the uh, called as crypto is called as round segment is because when if you see uh, the round uh, or KT, it will be the round segment on top. <laughs> it is called as round segment why d is flat top because here the segment where the eye will be at, at, on top just below that the segment is flat in kt it is opposite it is round that is why that is called round and this is called flat so for d shape it similar to round it is similar to uh, the round segment with the top cut off basically the top of the top is cut off generally 4.5 to 5 millimeter above the center of the segment. Again, here the segment size ranges from 22 to 45, but usually 28 millimeter or greater is used now. This is by far the most accepted kind of uh, segment in the uh, entire, like uh, if you compare crypto D and executive, D is the most accepted. 
the third segment is executive now it is made up of a single piece of material so here there is no fusion here there is one piece of lens one piece of single piece of material which is uh, curved or cut into different curvatures and then the power is uh, formed so that uh, two different powers are catered so it is made up with a single piece of material in which the reading power is generated by producing different curvature on the surface of the lens we have read how you know uh, you, with different curvature you can create powers the other surface of the lens has power for distance the upper the uh, here the advantage is it has a large field of view for near work why because if you see an executive bifocal it is cut half and half so if you go back and see the cryptoc and the d they are segments basically small small segment of the near vision but in executive it will have a full distance and a full near with uh, a clear demarcation mark so uh, this is cosmetically not very appealing uh, but uh, visually this is the most because this has the least image jump but because of the visual appearance uh, it is not the most commonly used d is used by and large now i have been talking about jump effect that jump effect come here what is jump effect now we all know that uh, from one power to other power if there is a there's change then there there will be a jump effect because uh, addition will be higher right so jump effect it occurs because there is a sudden change while shifting the gaze so when we are seeing distance and then uh, immediately we have to see something near then there's a uh, there's a shift and that that's a very uh, Gra uh, that, that's not a gradual shift that's a uh, you know sudden shift so that's why there's this that image jump can occur so as the near visual point does not coincide with the optical center of the near lens then because there's a prismatic effect uh, that image jump is created so uh, if you remember the other class we have all read about how you know uh, uh, your pupillary center your optical center have to be on the same line to you know uh, minimize prismatic effect and then and then distortion and all now we usually what we do is when we take the measurement we take the measurement for the distance so pupillary center or and your optical center for the distance is same so that there's no prismatic effect but when you are putting uh, the segment of the near there's a difference so there happens the image jump so uh, in uh, your uh, um, executive there's absolutely uh, almost nil image jump because it's almost in the center but d is still better because cosmetically also it looks good and it has less image jump than kit now why is that here i have not put that okay let me tell you just let me go back so here if you see the uh, you know design यहाँ पे क्या है आपका जो क्रिप्टॉक का जो राउंड है वाई इज द इमेज जम्प मोर इन क्रिप्टॉक इज बिकॉज जो डिस्टेंस है वो ज्यादा है आपके यहाँ के ऑप्टिकल सेंटर से इस इस ऑप्टिकल सेंटर का डिस्टेंस थोड़ा ज्यादा होता है जबकि आपके डी में वो डिस्टेंस थोड़ा कम होता है इसीलिए इसमें इमेज जम्प थोड़ा कम होता है आई होप यूर अंडरस्टैंडिंग Okay, sorry. Okay. Now, procedure for fitting bifocals. Uh, the segment height is marked over the dummy lens while the frame is worn by the patient. And this is very important. Sometimes, uh, uh, interns, especially interns and practicing who are now practicing, uh, maybe you have seen some sometimes that you know uh, uh, the the person will just take you know measure the PD and say that okay uh, on uh, PD ke upper we will you know uh, um, kind of do some calculation and ham uh, 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 bana denge and they really don't take the measurement. But that is not right. If you are seeing that practice, you should say uh, you know no to that and then. do it correctly and if you are doing then uh, it's great but marking the segment height over the dummy lens is very very important that is how a bifocal marking should be done so height of the segment should coincide with the margin of the lower lid this is important height of the segment where the segment will come it should coincide with the lower lid margin segment inset which is around 2.5 inset in inset is Uh, we all know that when we are seeing uh, 
anything which is near we converge we tend to converge so that movement is in the term of placing the uh, segment of the uh, your bifocal is called as inset wo andar ki taraf aapka segment baithta hai to wo inset as per the pd near pd and power of the lens diya jata hai but it is usually 2.5 Preferably minimum segment size should be twenty two mm. Now segment size Q uh, important है because उस segment से आप जितना segment दोगे उसी segment से your patient will read the near. So you have to make sure that the frame is not too small or not too big. It is ideal so that a proper segment size or segment height is uh, getting adjusted in that frame. So this is the procedure of fitting a bifocal. so this is how an ideal fit should look okay now there's something called trifocal lens this is not uh, what is you know used much because now we have uh, progressive lenses then we have for other purpose we have office lenses and all but i thought that i'll just give a small uh, brief about what it is this lens is with three three different portions as the name suggests trifocal so for three distances distance intermediate and near so jab when uh, pals were not introduced uh, uske pehle trifocals were used and then after after that also few years they were kind of used so intermediate power kaise calculate karna hai it's very easy your distance part plus half the near add will be your intermediate power so if your patient specifically asks ki what is the intermediate so for example not for trifocal or not for bifocal also if you are uh, after your refraction is done and then when you are suggesting if the person wants only an intermediate spectacle then this is how you calculate and give the power that will help the person for the inter intermediate distance okay next uh, type is uh, occupational lenses now these can be different kinds they are based on occupation so agar aap plumber hai agar aap golfer hai if you are playing golf or you are a plumber then your visual needs will be different so uh here's the definition so it's a lens that is chosen with careful forethought and position for a specialized viewing situation maybe classified as an occupational lens so it is depending upon your need basically so these are the different types of occupational lenses so double d then you have quadrifocal then you have red right minus add up curve so uh double d is something which is like uh, for i would say for a uh, okay for a plumber because a plumber usually kaise karte hain kaam matlab unko uh, niche so you know lie down karke and then they have to kind of uh, through the distance part they want to see something which is near unko kuch pipe ka kaam karna hai or maybe electrician uh, unko kuch kaam karna hai so then this kind of a uh, design help them because they want to lie down and then from the distance portion they want to see something which is near so putting the power there will help them so this is kind of you know kind uh, uh, changing your lens positions and designing something and then giving a customize to your uh, patient so this is what is occupation okay the next and uh, kind of this is uh, this is i i think everybody has heard about progressive addition lenses so uh, pals as we say in short it is progressive addition lens they are sometimes called progressive for convenience and uh, also sometimes as no line bifocals invisible bifocals or multifocals uh, progressive is liye bolte hain because gradually the power progresses from top to bottom that is why it is called as a progressive lens a uh, progressive addition lens now uh, it is said that it is clear at all distances but uh, slowly we will come to know that you know uh, how the lens design works and everything but just for a gist it is like you have clear vision for all three distances from a single lens without any demarcation line uh so this is how a progressive is basically um, you know explained there's a continuous change in radius of curvature how the power is given continuous change in radius of curvature from top to bottom of the lens and thus it looks like a single vision lens okay so this is how uh, if you draw the uh, you know the distance the intermediate the near vision if you draw graph graphic kind of a thing you will find that 
the lens looks like this, the power is distributed like this. Now, it is a lens designed for press biops uh, with gradual, with the power gradually increasing from distance to the near zone. So uh, you have this as distance, you have this as this corridor, we call this as the corridor, we corridor as a intermediate vision, and then this place as a near vision. This is something which is called as um, unwanted. You know, you, we, you don't want to see through this. It has a lot of astigmatic effect, a lot of um, distortion and all. So that I will uh, explain you. Okay. So the view through the progressive lens is this portion as we as in the previous slide a distance you will see your distance your intermediate which is mainly your computer screen your laptop screen and then your telephone and all uh, in the desk these are at, usually at your intermediate uh, space and then you have your of course so as already said that continuous change in radius gives the uh, you know power and thus it looks like a single vision lens it has clear vision in the distance intermediate and near and uh, right now uh, they are kind of the closest to natural vision so as i said that this will be your distance this corridor will be your uh, uh, intermediate where the power from distance to near gradually progresses and then here will be your maximum add there's a point where your maximum add will be there till then there will be slow progression of the power uh, from the distance to near and this is your unwanted cylinder okay. now in progressives the, that was a uh, uh, that was a gist basically a rough design that how how the lens basically works or how the power is distributed uh, in the lens. Now there's something called as hard design and something called as soft design and then long corridor and short corridor. So hard design is short progression and hard periphery. Soft design is long progression and soft periphery. Now uh, today in the market, we have a uh, you know, lot of new advancements I am not going to those because uh, the, this session is on uh, the uh, you know theory part and to know what things are there. Practical uh, or uh, market oriented things, maybe we can discuss later sometime if you guys want or uh, so right now we are doing the traditional uh, kind. So, so hard design and soft design basically. Now hard design what it is that it has short progression and a hard periphery. So, Short progression in the sense is this is the progression corridor basically. So immediately aapka distance power jo hai, the distance power ke baad immediately thode time ke baad hi aapka near vision aa jayega. So the uh, change in power or the I would say the combinations of power given is less and it immediately kind of reaches your near power. And the periphery is hard in the sense that it has lot of aberrations and so if you kind of try and see through these places you will find that everything is distorted but whereas in the soft design it has a relatively longer progression and it has a softer periphery so this is kind of more soothing to the eye but then again depending upon your patient you have to choose now for example i'll just give a small example Suppose aapke paas koi aisa patient aya hai who is almost about to touch 60, suppose 58, 59 and since the age of 40, the person is using. So it's almost around, you know, more than 15, 16 years, the person is using a bifocal. Now bifocal ka kya advantage hai? Bifocal ka ye advantage hai that you get a very clear distance and a very clear near. But disadvantage is that you don't get intermediate at all. But in uh, progressive you have this option so now uh, depending upon the lifestyle suppose that patient has come to you and is kind of saying that no i need something now because everything is digital with this lockdown a lot of digital things and have come i need to see you know uh, laptop and screen and all i'm find, finding really difficulty real difficulty in seeing the uh, screen and all to so this kind of a patient you have to be careful while prescribing the design you will definitely uh, tell that patient or convince that patient that okay, bifocal se aapko progressive, intermediate is very good, 
but then uh, uh, you know uh, it will take your intermediate is very good but then it takes So the intermediate portion is there, but then it's reaching at very soon. Then this person person will be more happier because anyways he is not. But then, if you kind of give him something, just me, usko near vision effect ho raha hai ya distance vision effect ho raha hai, then he might come back to you and complain that. So this is, you know, to your patient, you must understand the lifestyle and tell the patient, explain the patient, and then leave him to the. These are, uh, you know, आगे जाके और we will ये, but these these are generic. And it, uh, disadvantage में of course cost factor is there. Uh, if you compare with bifocal, then a basic progressive will also cost at least fifteen hundred to two thousand rupees more than what the person spends. So that definitely is uh, a disadvantage. Okay. Now dispensing of progressive lenses. So this is how a progressive lens should be positioned. Distance. The the uh, so the design you can't. when i can't actually change the design it will have the distortions but it should be placed as here uh, this the distance should be there and the near should be here and the progression like this because uh, always in, okay and uh, okay one more interesting thing i forgot so agar aap kt uh, kt bifocal lenge to kt mein na right left nahi hota hai usme kaisa hai usme aap aapko wo goal segment jo hota hai wo aap kaise bhi bitha sakte ho right eye right eye left eye nahi hota hai theek hai d mein hota hai और आपका प्रोग्रेसिव में भी होता है प्रोग्रेसिव में राइट लेंस राइट आई का लेंस अलग होगा लेफ्ट आई का लेंस अलग होगा ओके सो फाइन सो प्रोग्रेसिव लेंसेस दे कैन बी ओके प्रेफरेबली सिलेक्ट स्पेक्टिकल फ्रेम विद द एडजस्टेबल नोज पैड ओके नाउ फ्रेम सिलेक्शन इज आल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट यू वी नीड टू सिलेक्ट अ फ्रेम ताकि अगर आगे जाके ट्रबल शूटिंग का केस आता है then the frame should be easily adjustable so in that case if you take a cellulite uh, so, so, sorry cellulose frame or a plastic frame then uh, the uh, adjust adjustment uh, uh, you know percentage becomes a little low than uh, frames with nose pad and metal frames so that again th this is like not very um, i would say that was a traditional thought now uh, things have been better now but then still Uh, with nose pad adjustments are always easier uh, select the right size of the frame the fitting cross must be accurately positioned at the center of the pupil so this cross jo hum lete hain this is called as the fitting cross which should match the center of the pupil okay the recommended position with the fitting cross at the bottom of the pupil even if the pupil distance was taken with a pupilometer a second check should be done by dotting the pupil centers on the demo lenses so progressive lenses it is very 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 important now people who are into internship again internship ya fir third year mein bhi hai agar aap logo ne uh, marking charts dekha hai i have not put a uh, put how a marking chart looks here but then uh, you can maybe you know go back when you go back or if you have you can always see the uh, marking chart Uh, it's it's very easy to mark a progressive or remark a progressive using those so that's a very important tool so if you if you even have taken uh, your pd through a pupilometer it is always always recommended that you ask the person the person when the frame selection is complete to take the entire measurement using the, the same frame which will go to the lab for the fitting of the lens that will make your uh, Uh, you know uh, fitting almost 100% correct uh, fitting parameters i would say so okay now adjust the pantoscopic tilt we have learned what pantoscopic tilt is so around 12 to 15 degrees align the nose pads uh, check the temple fit uh, temple length and fit and the facial rack okay 
so the next is lenticular design okay troubleshooting and all uh, i have put it in uh, in the later bit after uh, finishing everything so that we have uh, you know proper amount of time to discuss and then find solutions and stuff so we will discuss troubleshooting later now the next design is lenticular design uh, this it is a high power lens which are which is usually in the central part with a smaller diameter reducing the peripheral thickness now lenticular design it has less weight and less peripheral prismatic effect poor cosmosis and small field of view lenticular design hum log usually kaha dete hain uh, for uh, people who are aphasic तो सपोज ऐसा हुआ है कि बहुत पुराने पेशेंट है आप लोगों ने अभी लेंटिकुलर डिजाइन बहुत ज्यादा मिलते नहीं है बट वी हैव आई हैव सीन फ्यू केसेस सो इट हैज इट बेसिकली हैज आई शुड हैव पुट अ फोटो सो इट बेसिकली हैज अ कैरियर व्हिच इज लाइक अ एकदम थिन थिन लेंस एंड देन इट हैज द पावर्ड लेंस सो वेन यू फिट दैट जो पतला वाला पार्ट है दैट गेट्स इनटू द फ्रेम आप उसको एज कर सकते हो अच्छे से एंड देन योर विजुअल वेयर वेयर यू फ्रॉम योर वेयर योर विजन इज योर विजन इज देयर देन द पावर्ड ग्लासेस फुट सो पीपल हु आर एफ एफ एक ऑलमोस्ट अराउंड यू नो प्लस 20 प्लस 19 दैट काइंड ऑफ पावर दैट्स अ लेंटिकुलर लेंस बेसिकली ओके अ the next design is aspheric so it is a lens designed to produce images better by having its edges flattened or steepened again changing the curvature basically so that it is not of a perfect shape hence it is called as a non spherical so a lens which has different sphere spheres or you know curves basically that is called as an aspheric now what is the purpose of aspheric is to make the lens more thin so it usually uh, the, the advantage is aspheric it's lighter thinner and flatter so if you see uh, percentage wise from traditional lenses it is up to 35% thinner 43% lighter and 45% flatter so uh, with higher prescriptions if uh, for example if your patient uh, has chosen something which is uh, you know a titanium frame with very thin rims but has a uh, The power which is around you know minus five or uh, plus four or higher and maybe with cylindrical combinations, then prescribing a aspheric lens is way better uh, for a better fitting um, and a better vision. So this is how you basically you know uh, kind of select uh, and uh, give your uh, give choices to a patient. Uh, so advantages. it definitely improves cosmesis because the eyes they look more natural due to uh, the reduction of magnification good off axis visual uh, visibility now we know that uh, with plus and minus we have barrel and pin cushion distortions i think everybody has uh, read that now with uh, aspheric because of the optics the distortion and aberrations are lessened they are reduced thinner per periphery and less magnification in case of minus oblique astigmatism and distortions are minimized now uh, the best combination is when you uh, put this aspheric quality with a high index material then it gives a better result so high index what it does it makes the lens thinner because of flat base curve because of flat base curve but the peripheral distortions they are increased which are minimized with the use of aspheric lenses so uh, you reach the thinness using a high index material but then as we discussed you know previously that because uh, uh, you know high index lenses they have this advantage that they can be made thin but then the abbe uh, becomes low the chromatic uh, aberrations are there as well as chromatic aberrations along with higher order aberrations uh, uh do come so then adding the aspherity will help minimize those distortions okay so now we move on to ophthalmic lens coatings 
hard coating okay now if you go back and remember the previous class when we discussed about plastic glass polycarbonate and then uh, your uh, um, uh, the other material what is this trivex and then then we have mr material and all we uh, we discussed uh, with every lens the only lens which was kind of hard and resistant to scratches or maybe scratch proof also we can say is glass glass other than other than that all the other materials be it a cr be it a poly be it a mr or a trivex they all need a hard coat because the um, surface of these lenses are soft compared to glass that is where the coating comes now you have to remember that coatings are not uh, you know the property of a lens right so they are they are not inbuilt in the within the lens they are applied so that is why they are called coats now uh, generally it is uh, a resin is dissolved in alcohol so how it is made basically and then a thin film is applied to the surface of the lens and then it is cured to form a hard layer the use of hard coating substantially reduces scratching and abrasions of lenses during use so they make your lens surface uh, better uh, resistant to scratches not 100% but yes resistant to scratches they are more important on polycarbonate and high index though nowadays i think um, all the high index lenses they come with a uh you don't have to specify the lab previously we had to but nowadays i don't think uh, uh, these lenses they come with already with a hard coat okay uh it, it helps protect the lens and uh, uh, with add ons such as photochromatic dyes or plastic lenses from degradation and of course it is a value addition in dispensing okay so the primary function is to make the surface of lens like glass Uh, this is just to compare okay but then of of course it is not 100% uh, scratch resistant uh, scratch it is not scratch proof it is scratch resistant remember the term when you say also uh, like <laughs> for example hello uh, hello yes? sorry ma'am to interrupt in between in the previous slide there was something um, yeah value added dispensing what is what does it mean so value added dispensing is uh, something which is uh, when you are adding more value to your dispensing skills basically so now when you are dispensing a spectacle or a spectacle lens uh, you keep you know you try to upgrade right so in that yes, case uh, say that all these things are upgradation so aapko ek aapke paas ek patient aaya to aapko pata chala okay this person has a uh, refractive error you can very well give him a plus basic plastic lens and a basic glass lens but then all these things what we are learning you know high index or a polycarbonate or a titanium frame uh, or a you know carbon fiber frame all these things are value addition which uh, makes your dispensing better and different from maybe an, a conventional seller so that is what is a value added dispensing so you are adding more value to your product basically fine yes ma'am thank you ma'am so okay then okay so they are applied by spin coating so this is how uh, your uh, the liquid coating is applied on the lenses spin coating dip coating and more recently by in mold and vacuum dis dis uh, deposition i will show you this uh, the mold basically where how these lenses are uh, uh, you know the coating is basically put on the lenses uh okay one advantage one very important advantage of these hard coats are some of them are tintable so if you again go back to the other class i said that uh, there are few uh, materials which do not hold uh, uh, you know color so how will you you know uh, the um, you know best example is polycarbonate polycarbonate is not very friendly in absorbing color so abhi uh, almost all sunglasses are made of uh, uh, sorry all sunglasses are colored right and they are mostly polycarbonate so how do you color them you put a tintable hard coat on top of the lens and then you tint that coat that is how it is made so tintable hard coats are available with um, uh, again, like against your uh, 
CR high index and poly. So, uh, is may be aberration test hota hai. So, the tests are if you see a transparent lens and then this kind of a, a you know, tint on uh, now uh, polished sur surface, we know that they reflect light and these reflections they produce ghost images. Light coming from an image do not is anti reflection coating. Uh, okay. Now, reflection of an object, especially uh, you will an anti reflection coating, it should the lens will. Okay. The reflections it occurs when there's a change of refractive index, we know that the lens front surface as well as the back surface. Magnitude of reflection the greater the refractive index, more is the light reflected, higher refractive index material reflects more light. So, these are the things when you're prescribing, you have to keep in mind. The shape and direction of reflection the flatter the curve, more likely the wearer will notice reflection. Flat curves like mirrors, they reflect the image in the same shape and direction where it comes from. Now, anti-reflection coating. Um, okay, so uh, there's something, this is a second generation AR coating because again, uh, you know, uh, they keep on uh, advancing the uh, uh, science. Now, there are, there's something called as hydrophobic coating tops. They reduce surface friction uh, and it, they improve the ability to clean. Now, for example, uh, with, with daily usage, uh, your spectacle will, you know, attract dust, uh, dust, dust on it. And then when you try and clean your spectacle with your cloth, those small particles of pollution might scratch your lens. So then that led to something which is called as a hydrophobic coating. Now, hydrophobic itself, the term means that it repels. So uh, if it repels water. So if you make the surface like that, and yes, ion assisted. So uh, two things, two improvements. One is this hydrophobic and then there's this uh, ion assisted. So uh, hydrophobic makes it easy to clean because the surface is like uh, waxy. Uh, it is so slippery that no dust tends to sit on it. And ion assisted is suppose you're every time you are cleaning your spectacle and then wearing. So that cleaning that friction kind of uh, you know, uh, produces some charge. Like, uh, kabhi -kabhi aapne dekha hoga na, aap, uh, you are brushing your hair and then after the, your static, uh, yeah, uh, static uh, power that's, that is. So, uh, when you comb your hair because of friction, uh, your hair starts getting attracted to your comb. Something similar happens with the lens as well. So, when, when you wipe it with the cloth, uh, this negative positive energy, uh, negative energy kind of is, uh, produced and they kind of attract the, the opposite charged particles. So ion assisted what it helps is it will not have any uh, you know charge created on the surface. So it becomes it, it, it is a neutral surface. So one because of ion assisted it attracts attracts less dust and the hydrophobic coating helps uh, whatever dust is there it slips down. So it is ultimately leading to something which is easy to clean. So your patient will not be, you know, kind of every time removing the spectacle and cleaning. So that gives more freedom to clear vision. Okay, I said already, uh, yes. Okay, so this is very important. Uncoated CR39, there's not much of a difference. The transmission is around 92%. With anti-reflection coating, it is around 98%. So it in enhances the, uh, it, it reduces reflection too. So this is the benefit. It gives better cosmosis. Okay. So if you uh, go through the anatomy, it has a hydrophobic top coat. Then depending upon the, you know, manufacturer, basically it, uh, the number of layers of anti-reflection uh, it again uh, is decided. So there will be layer number of layers. Under that will be the hard coating, an addition layer, and then the lens substrate. So this is how from top to bottom, from top to bottom, the lens, or from the if you take from the lens substrate, then there's an addition layer, then there's a hard coat, then there's your anti-reflection, and then you have your hydrophobic or your ion assisted coat. this we have done yes now if you have visited a lab you must might have seen 
otherwise this is how a chamber looks your anti reflection chamber uh, looks so these are the uh, you know panels where the lenses are uh, you know set and then here somewhere here the uh, you know the uh, material which will be vaporized and which will go and sit on the lenses as your anti reflection coat is um, placed and then under uh, your uh, when it is closed and then there is vacuum uh, under vacuum uh, vacuum there will be uh, uh, this process kind of goes in so it takes at almost around maybe an hour or so 35 minutes to an hour to get the um, process done Uh, and again as i said the purplish or the greenish the color which kind of uh, when you see it under light there's kind of a small uh, you know hue that you get to see that depends on what material you are giving okay facial measurements so we have all kind of uh, learned uh, or i or maybe heard of this pantoscopic tilt now we Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation and giving us so much knowledge about dispensing optics. And I'm really thankful to all the attendees for the cooperation. Thank you so much. We will be discussing it on the another session, and we'll be having a question-answer session also in another session. Thank you so much.